What is a knife but the primordial tool of mankind? This simple companion essential to mould the potential of your surroundings, to carve habitable order in the chaos and help create the necessities for human life. The Ski and Do is the iconic small Scottish knife, the everyday carry tool for our Highland ancestors. Since starting my Highlander Survival series, I've been dreaming up my personal ultimate Ski and Do survival knife, something that captures the past but with aspects of my favourite bushcraft knives so you want to use it every day. And this is what I've come up with. Introducing the Survival Ski and Do, or affectionately named the Fand Abbey Do. In this video I'll briefly talk about the history of this famous Scottish knife, my thinking and philosophy behind the particular design and a rundown of the limited edition variants I've made. Finally I'll share how you can purchase one for yourself or enter the charity fundraisers for a chance to win one or both of my special Ski and Do designs. So stay tuned. Hi folks, Tom from Bandavi Dozy and TomLanghorn.com. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just got some new patches that are now available on the website. Uh, so before I do a rundown of my design and the different variants that are now on sale and how you can get one, I want to give a bit of history on the Ski and Do and also some context behind uh, my particular Fand Abbey Do design. So what is a Ski and Do? Well, if you look at many cultures around the world, especially ones that would spend time away from main settlements, they tend to carry three different knives, basically a small, a medium and a large, to basically cover the different life tasks from the heavy duty to the small and intricate. Now the Ski and Do would have covered that smaller knife for our Highland ancestors, basically the small everyday carry knife um, for everyday tasks. Now the word Ski and Do means black knife or dark knife in Gaelic. Ski and knife, do, black or dark coloured. And you see that word do in many place names all around the Highlands uh, to describe mountains or lochs that have a sort of dark murky colour. There's a few different theories on why it's called it, but the most realistic theory in my mind is that the handles were often made from bog oak, which is basically oak that's fallen into a bog, and over thousands of years the acids in the bogs almost like pickle the wood, preserve it, and they make it go very, very dark. Um, some are you know, tens of thousands of years old. The longer it's been in the bog, the darker the, the colour of wood gets. Um, but of course, you know, people wouldn't limit their handles just to that material, because it's not the most common thing to find. Uh, so you see many historical examples of the handles being made from other types of wood, from cow horn, deer antler, stuff like that. So around the 17th century and prior to that, the Ski and Do doesn't really follow any particular design. The, the blade shapes change a bit, so do the handles. The handles are often a sort of wedge shape, but in the Victorian era, uh, the Victorians romanticised and militarised a lot of Highland culture and clothing and developed what we now consider as the modern kilt dress. And we see the Ski and Do being worn in sock, and develop a sort of symmetrical shape, often very ornate. Uh, so this symmetrical shape, in my mind, has become the iconic shape of the Ski and Do. At least when I see that shape, I'm like, ah, oh, that's the Ski and Do and not just another small knife. So since starting the Highlander Survival Series back in spring of 2018, I've been searching for a Ski and Do knife you can actually use as a functional knife in the wild, as most of the ones that you buy in the shops these days are just for ceremonial purposes. They're not that functional. Um, so, you know, over the last couple of years, I've found some fantastic craftsmen uh, and I talk about some of their knives in my Scottish Knife Collection video. But, you know, I still couldn't find something exactly what I was like, looking for. So, you know, I figured I better design and make one for myself. So what was I exactly looking for? Well, there's tons of videos on the internet of people discussing the ultimate one tool survival knife. And I'm not saying that this design particularly covers that. If I could only take one tool with me, I'd probably pick some, a knife you know, bigger and more heavy duty. However, there's a good saying that I like, that the best survival knife is the one you happen to have on you in a survival situation. So what features of a knife makes me want to take it with me every day, even if it's just for a short walk foraging, or you know, out in the workshop or out gardening? Because these features are often quite different. So I came up with my own personal criteria for the ultimate Ski and Do survival knife. So one, I wanted it to be historically inspired, basically look old school, so I can wear it as part of my Highlander kit, but with aspects of my favourite bushcraft knives, so I want to use it every day. I wanted the blade to be carbon steel and have a Scandinavian bevel on it, which is my favourite bevel angle for bushcraft tests. I wanted it to have a 90 degree spine in it, so I can use it to process tinder and to use on my ferro rod. An important thing to me was a really good sheath system, uh, which I think is often overlooked. Obviously the blade uh, is important for the actual functioning of the knife, but it's the sheath that actually makes you want to wear it and take it with you. 
Um, so I wanted a solid wooden sheath with a satisfying friction hold system. I don't really like buttons or latches and things for knives. Um, and I also wanted the sheath to allow you to, to wear it in multiple ways. Uh, on the belt, both vertically or horizontally, as a neck knife, as an armpit knife. But I still wanted the sheath and the knife to be slender enough so that you can wear it in the sock as part of the modern kilt dress. I wanted the balance between weight and robustness, and finally, the balance between simplicity, functionality, but also beauty. So something mainly on the functional side, but also easy on the eyes would be nice. So about six months ago, I put my head together with my buddy Steve from Field & Steel, who's a really experienced knife maker. We came up with a blade design together. He made it posted up to me and I started experimenting with different handle and sheath designs. And this is the prototype I came up with and over the past six months I've been putting it through its paces. And you've probably seen it in a number of my past videos. Um, I've used it on lots of overnight trips, I've used it while teaching survival lessons, uh, preparing firewood, cooking, fishing, carving small wooden items, it's butchered a couple of deer, it's prepared a number of small game and uh, yeah I'm really really happy with it. Uh, and I've only changed a few minor things with the pin design and pummel for the final Fan Dabby Doo design. So this is the final design of the Fan Dabby Doo. I have a number of variant examples but they all follow the same basic features. The knife in its sheath weighs about 143 grams and is 19 centimeters long, 5.5 centimeters wide and about 2.5 centimeters thick at its thickest point. As I said before, the right sheath design was really important to me. So the sheath is made from solid oak with brass pins completely enclosing the blade. It has a thick leather collar which securely holds the knife in place. It takes a little bit of force to remove the knife, which I like, a bit of security and peace of mind. And it also acts like a child lock. But it's still easy to remove with one hand by pushing with your thumb off the collar. And you can also adjust the tightness of fit by loosening or tightening the leather belt strap that creates friction on the knife handle. Another thing that was important to me was a satisfying click noise. You know, it's, it's the little things. It's ambidextrous so it can be worn and used on the left or right side and the belt strap has a simple adjustable design so you can fit on different belt sizes or using a piece of your favourite cord or webbing it can be worn as a neck knife or my personal favourite as an armpit knife. It's secure fit and slim designs means you can just stick it in your pocket or down the side of a backpack or stick it in the top of your kilt sock. At the bottom of the sheath there is a drainage hole in case of heavy rain and also a perpendicular hole allowing more methods of carry to be improvised. With the aid of some cord you can experiment and create your own preferred method whether that's horizontal on the belt or strapped to your leg in the kilt sock providing more security. The handle has a classic symmetrical curvy design made from oak and brass pins, slender but comfortable in the hand. It's mainly functional but has a bit of bling to catch the eye. The guard is slightly rounded to allow easy movement in and out of the sheath. The blade is made from 01 German carbon steel and in the past the prized Highland swords and dirk blades were often made in Germany so it's cool to still have that link. It's 3mm thick. 3 centimeters wide and 8 centimeters long. So a good balance between not too thick, so good for slicing food, but also robust enough for average small bushcraft tasks. It has that classic symmetrical shape with some decorative features of a ski and do with notches on one side and a double bevel. I found this shape of blade great for fine carving, especially creating notches for friction fires and also great for skinning and processing game. The cutting edge of the knife has about a 24 degree bevel, which you could describe as a Scandinavian bevel, which is my favourite for bushcraft tasks as it's easy to keep sharp and has that balance between sharpness and durability. It has a 90 degree spine to use as a scraper for processing tinder and also taking sparks from a ferro rod. The double bevel at the front of the knife can also be used for more control use on your ferro rod. It has a rat tail tang peened at the end so it's robust enough for all the tasks you expect a knife this size to do, but it also saves on weight. With all my bushcraft tools, I follow three philosophies. You're only as sharp as your tools. Look after your tools, and they'll look after you. And sharpen ones, hone forever. Same goes for this knife. The blade comes already razor sharp, and if looked after and not damaged, it shouldn't ever need sharpening. Just a quick honing after any extensive use especially after working a lot on hardwood or butchering game where it may have run along some hard bone. I just use a cheap diamond honing rod 
wet it in some water and simply follow the angle of the bevel. You can hold the edge up to the light and any curls will reflect the light more. So these areas need a little bit more attention. You can then strop it on a leather belt or other strop, apply it food safe oil, even some cooking oil will do, and it's good as new. And it's time like this to care for your tools that you know I find personally quite relaxing and satisfying. As all these knives are handmade, they're all unique in their own way, but I've made four fan dabidus of the same design and four variants. Same construction, just with different wood, pin and leather variations. Some have got a bit more bling, some a bit more minimalist, one with light oak and dark leather, one with light oak and light leather, for a bit of diversity. I also made two special knives, which I'm going to have as prizes for two fundraisers, with a percentage of each going to two different charities. The first one I call the Ski and Fay, meaning the deer knife. Its handle is made from oak and red deer antler I found hiking in the highlands. I tried to follow the natural shape of the antler and created something a bit different, with a groove to allow the forefinger to sit in. It's really comfy in both the left or the right hand. It has some decorative brass pins and a brass pummel. The sheath is the same oak and leather collar, but the bottom of it is covered with red deer summer hide. Same hide I made my shoes and bow case from, so nothing is wasted. The second special knife I call the Skien Leuch, meaning the hero knife. Something more on the decorative side, but still super functional. The handle is oak and red deer antler with a brass bolster and pummel. Again, I tried to follow the natural shape of the antler, giving it a slight curvy, unusual design. It comes with a dark oak and leather collar sheath. A percentage of the money raised for the deer knife will go to a charity called Trees for Life, which is dedicated to regenerating the Scottish native forest, a cause close to my heart. And for the hero knife, it will go to a charity called Survival International, which works to protect the ways of life for indigenous peoples all around the world. So how can you pick one up for yourself? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm not becoming a full-time knife maker, otherwise I wouldn't have time to make videos, which is the whole reason why you're here. I just wanted to share a design that I'm really passionate about. So each knife takes about a week to complete, so I'm afraid I just can't make them affordable to everyone. But even if you don't want a knife, you can pick up a Fan Dabby Dozy patch, or you can enter into one of the fundraising campaigns uh, for a chance to win one or both of the special knives. So follow the link to my website below where you'll find all the information on how to get one and how to enter the two fundraisers. The eight finished Fan Dabby Do's are at different set prices which includes free international postage and the Fan Dabby Dozy patch. First come, first serve basis. I'll also take five orders for me to make you a custom knife with any of the variations you see here of your choosing. Once those five are filled, I'll close my books, but if you miss out on that, you can keep updated on any openings by signing up to my emailing list on my website or follow me on Instagram. So shout out to Steve from Field and Steel for helping me out in this project and also just being really, really good guidance. Um, check out his Instagram to see his personal collection. Also shout out to my buddy Jack from Steady Hand Productions who did those sexy black backdrop shots that you saw. Uh, so if you need any filming services in Scotland, go check out his website. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, huge thanks to my patrons. I say it all the time. I'll say it again. I really do appreciate it. Thanks so much for the support. Uh, and hope you enjoy this video. Hope you have a good day. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Cheers.